All right, welcome to Pod Race for the Case Thanksgiving edition. Hope you guys are traveling safely. Enjoy or already enjoyed. However, this comes out wherever you're listening to it, or you need to slip into the backyard and have a cocktail and not listen to your family argue over stuff. Uh, and you just want to listen to us. I mean, why not? We argue, but it's, you know, we all love each other. We're we a do. happy family. We're a real family here. Because we don't actually live together. It does help. A couple hours a week on a on a Zoom. <laughs> make it. You can make it. So, obviously, look, we talked to Ohio. If you're looking for Ohio State, Michigan, we did the last episode a ton. And the one before. Talked to Florida State. Talked a bunch. But I, one of the things about, obviously, that's the game this weekend. But college football just ends in such a, like, spectacular fashion. And there's all these teams that have had good seasons and then they play their arch rivals and then it, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle sometimes. Like some of these games would be so huge if they're played in like week six, but they aren't. But that's all right. This is what you build to. I like it. I said on the last time, I like when you build to your rival and the in-state stuff is great, even if it causes mayhem on Thanksgiving. Uh, so beyond uh, Ohio State, Michigan, maybe you know, we're going to talk when we pick the games, Washington, Washington State or something like or uh, Oregon, Oregon State, Civil War. Um, what games are you looking forward to this weekend? And it could be the big rivalry. It could have something to do with a with a, a chase. We usually do this uh, any weekend. It's our last big weekend where we have a lot of games that might intrigue us that aren't always obvious. So, uh, Pat, I'll start with you. What game are you looking forward to this weekend? Oh, boy, there's so many. I'm going to start. Uh, locally backyard here since I live in Louisville and the Louisville Kentucky game to me is super interesting. Cardinals have had their best season in a decade since uh, Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback and they were winning the sugar bowl. They are 10 and one, but Kentucky has been a nemesis and Kentucky. The last time they beat Kentucky was 2017. Lamar Jackson was the quarterback. So it's been a while. They've had some good teams get smoked by the Wildcats. And frankly, losing and getting smoked by the Wildcats last year helped get them Jeff Brom. I think it made Scott Satterfield feel like he was in an untenable position, so he bailed sideways move at best to Cincinnati. And lo and behold, here comes Brom, and everything has been glorious. But they, there are a lot of Louisville fans out there that are like, you know, 10 wins is awesome, but we really have to beat Kentucky this year, especially because Kentucky has crushed Louisville in the basketball rivalry, and they're going to do that again a month from now. So this is an important game for Cardinals fans, and uh, we'll see if Kentucky, which has had a disappointing season in its own right, can salvage a little momentum for next year and start uh, and, and inflict a little bit more pain on the Cardinals here uh, on Saturday at noon. I'm going local as well. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't not say the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night. It, it's, uh, it's one that kind of why I fell in love with college football, attending the Egg Bowl back in the late '90s and early 2000s. There's always a debate on like what you know, what rivalry in college football and in college sports in general is the most intense and the best rivalry and all this stuff. You always see the rankings. I think the Ole Miss Mississippi State rivalry is is just like the dirtiest rivalry. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just as I I I uh, tweeted like uh, earlier this week. It's the it's beautifully dirty, and it's partly because like there's nothing else for our people, right? Like. Ole Miss and Mississippi State haven't won a national title. Well, Mississippi State never has won a national title, and Ole Miss's last title was in the 50s. Neither team has won an SEC championship in, I don't know, four decades, maybe more. Uh, this is it. The Egg Bowl is it. Um, and it's what, and it's fired probably more coaches the Egg Bowl has, the result of it, than, than any other rivalry in college football. It, it, it truly has. Uh, I mean, just a couple few years ago, both coaches were fired after the Egg Bowl. It, it just, um, it's it's pretty intense. And every year, I I, uh, I do tweet out after kind of a, a thread. dog peeing celebration. That, uh, correct? Yes, urination. <laughs> You're missing the, the, uh, the urination. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's an all timer. We're all-timer. we're um, because of current events. Uh, 
I wanted to to um, mention a couple of things, espionage type things involved in the Mississippi State Ole Miss rivalry. The paranoia is always high on both campuses that week. And I remember being told this story, and I think I may have mentioned this on the pod last year, but Jackie Shiro, when he was coach at Mississippi State, was so paranoid that uh, of rebel spies uh, spying on his practices that he he planted dozens of, of fir trees around Mississippi State's practice field it, that now still exists. They're like 30 feet tall. During one uh, Ole Miss practice under David Cutcliffe, uh, an, an Ole Miss coach uh, during practice in the stadium raced up to the top of the stadium to confront what looked like a Mississippi State spy all dressed in maroon at the top of the stadium with, uh, with binoculars looking down at the Ole Miss field. And he threw the person over the side of the stadium. On the field, players gasped had they just w- witnessed a murder. But no, David Cutcliffe had concoct- concocted the whole thing. It was a mannequin dressed in maroon that was thrown over the side of the stadium. Uh, Dan Dan Mullen used to put the pictures of uh, like Ole Miss stickers and such in the Mississippi State locker room urinals uh, during this week, so players could you know, um, you know, do their business on, on the <laughs> Ole Miss logos. So it's just dirty. Uh, there's you know again, there's a lot of spying and espionage. It's it's the game I look forward to uh, pretty much all year, and and it is the one that uh, you know made me fall in love with college football, the passion and uh, the hatred in, in all of it. It's, it's college football all rolled into one. It, the best part is it's, it is a, it is a look into the crazy and it's rarely like it, it, it's, it's often they're both six and five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, and it is crazy. I mean, Dan didn't even mention that an old miss beat report or a Mississippi state beat reporter filed a public records request to get records for an <laughs> Ole Miss head coach, a certain Hugh Freeze, and then exposed him for calling, exposed those phone records, in, and he was found to have called an escort service and was fired. I mean, yep. come on. <laughs> I've always said that the, these are two programs willing to gouge each other's eyes out for the right to finish fifth in the SEC West. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will posit that uh, that here in Michigan, that Michigan and Michigan State are trying their best to equal yeah. uh, the Midwestern Egg Bowl. I mean, we had this year a spying scandal, which included uh, a Michigan staffer dressed up as a Central Michigan uh, coach uh, on the sideline of a game Michigan wasn't even in with spy glasses. <laughs> and then during the 49-0 beatdown, uh, uh, Hitler trivia got played. <laughs> so... Uh, and, and and part of the reason for the lopsided nature was because the Michigan State head coach had uh, had yeah. uh, inappropriate Zoom with the uh, uh, with the wrong <laughs> with the wrong chop person. Wood. We're trying, chop yeah, <laughs> chop some wood there. Uh, By the way, so this- we're trying to keep up, but it's 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 not easy. It's not no. easy, but we're trying. No. Uh, this game, by the way, is a good example, and we talk about a lot of these rivalry games, these big rivalry games involving CFP contenders. But when an expanded playoff arrives, you know, if we have seven games this weekend, um, pretty much all rivalry games, where CFP contenders are are in the mix for, in a in an expanded playoff, they'll probably be you'll go from seven to probably like fourteen yeah, to 14, or to eighteen games. games. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is one of them, right? Ole Miss, Mississippi yeah. State in an expanded playoff era could end Ole Miss's chances at nine and two. Could end Ole Miss's chances at uh, at being an at large, getting an at large spot in in an expanded playoff. The sport's gonna just boom next year. It's gonna be incredible, um, no question. All right, game I'm looking forward to: North Carolina State, North Carolina. Good uh, one. Both teams eight and three. Lot of rivalry there. Probably Drake May's last game at North Carolina. I, I don't know that he'll play a bowl game. Um, he's gonna be a top two pick. Can't imagine much more than that. Top five, certainly in the NFL. So you have that. Can Drake May go out with style? This NC State team fascinates me. They're eight and three. MJ Morris took over as their starting QB and then decided to redshirt after four games after beating Clemson and Miami. They bring Brat back Brennan Armstrong, who's like the team first guy of all time. He had switched to running back. Yeah. When he got demoted, now he's quarterback. They win two more games. 
Last week against Virginia Tech, he rushed 21 times for 89 yards and threw for 203. Can he gut this out and lead NC State to the weirdest nine and three season mm. with multiple quarterbacks and a and a and a a, 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 a red a rando red shirt in the middle and all of that <laughs> plus rando red rando rando red shirt and they hate each other and they're yeah. right there on top of each other and uh, this is gonna be a good game. I'm really interested to see who wins this game. So I'm fired yeah. up for NC State at uh, UNC. Yeah, I like that game too. The other element of that very quickly is, you know, UNC is a team that starts the year in the rankings. They've got the Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback. They got the top five pick. They've gotten all the attention in that this season. But here's NC State with a chance to make Drake May 0-2 as the starting quarterback in his career against mm. in, against the Wolfpack. Mm. I, they, it would be a heck of a thing for Dave Doran for his program. No. Yeah. All right. Any others? There's plenty. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Plenty more. I was going to say NC State and uh, North Carolina, so I'm glad you did. How about uh, the the Territorial Cup, Arizona, Arizona State? Mm. Arizona trying to finish off a phenomenal season. And who knows, if Oregon State knocks off Oregon Friday night, they will go Saturday into Tempe with a chance to play for the Pac-12 championship, which would just be ridiculous. Is Jed Fish being courted for other jobs? We'll see about that. Arizona hasn't won in Tempe since 2011. Kenny Dillingham was handed a tire fire uh, at Arizona State, but he's had some good wins. They're three and eight, but they're 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 dangerous. Three and eight nearly beat uh, Washington and Seattle. I think that's going to be a sneaky good game, and whoever wins is going to walk out of there feeling like a million dollars. I want to know if. Uh... Colorado and Deion Sanders are gonna end the year on a uh, on a six game losing streak. Uh, they uh, they are four and seven. They play at seven and four. Utah, obviously, a ton of hype from the Buffaloes early in the year. They got off to the three and zero start. Big noon kickoff was there like three straight weeks. Um, had like a Colorado's game, and then man, and then just you know what hit the fan and. Uh, Started losing games, and then Deion Sanders think made the kind of bizarre move to to change offensive play callers uh, from Sean Lewis, uh, and, and so that was odd. Uh, you know, this this feels like a big one entering a pretty important off season for Dion at Colorado, where I'm sure there's going to be some staff moves and shakeups, and I'm sure there's going to be. Uh, some different faces uh, on the offensive line, as he's been pretty clear about. So, but can they go in and can they pull off a big one? What would be a big one at at Utah? Uh, they are twenty one and a half point underdogs. I think Stanford broke that team. Hmm. Yeah, Just broke. Yeah, them. they need yeah. some yeah. momentum because I, I thought they would crush it in the portal, mm -hmm. and they still might. Uh, everything that that balloon just popped in that second half against Stanford. So we'll yep. see. We did like at least get we got Ross to say Dion again. So that yeah, that's good. true. We needed that. I'm sure, there'll be plenty of Dion off season talk. Uh, I like Clemson and South Carolina. Not your classic one, but South Carolina won that game last year, and 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 that is a was a significant victory for Shane Beamer, and and anytime they can try to catch up with Clemson, and it produced a lot of momentum and all that Clemson. Not a great season, seven and four, but buy stock, buy stock in a little old Clemson. So William Christopher Sweeney tells me, <laughs> right. and uh, they got to go to Columbia, and believe me, they they need they can't lose this can't go seven and five and lose to South Carolina two years in a row, like not acceptable. So if we're buying stock in Clemson, they beat South Carolina. This is going to be heated. It's going to be hated. All that it's going to be wild and. I don't think there's anything more like this is very important for Clemson to send South Carolina back to a five and seven season. Don't let them get bowl eligible, reassert command over this rivalry and get to eight and four and get off to a bowl and, 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 and talk about the future. I, I, it's a big momentum game for Clemson. Clemson trying to go four and zero since the showdown with Tyler from Spartanburg. Yep. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler should be out there. Thank you, Tyler. Dot the I in Clemson. <laughs> Clemson. 
Clemson. Yeah. Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Picks Pat, another one. Yeah. All right. I'm going three for one here. Sorry. Maybe this is hogging, but the entire Big Ten West tar pit slog uh, is coming down to a climactic <laughs> final week. None of the teams are any good, but there's some very interesting rivalry games there. Friday at noon, Iowa, Nebraska. Saturday at 3.30, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Also Saturday at 3.30, Northwestern, Illinois. Mm. Illinois is trying to get bowl eligible. Minnesota is trying to get bowl eligible. Nebraska is still trying to get bowl eligible. Fourth straight game, they're trying to do it. Mm. If any of those teams scores 20 points, I think they should get a trophy. I bet that we go 0 for 6. There will be no team scoring 20 points there. Specifically, the one interesting thing, Wisconsin-Minnesota all-time series, 62, 62, and 8. Whoever wins, leg up. You got the you you own the rivalry, not just the the Bunyan axe for a year, but you own the series record. Oh, you get the axe. That's my yeah. favorite trophy of them all. It's awesome. Yeah. Then they fake like they're gonna chop down the goalposts and stuff. Like, yes. <laughs> Big Ten West sucks, but they got great trophies. Oh, yeah. Mm. Great, great, uh, great trophies. Also, that uh, Iowa Nebraska Black Friday mm. game, uh, mm-hmm. 26 and a half is the spread. <laughs> it's just lowest. unbelievable. Now, I think it's the new lowest ever. Yeah. Um, 13 to 14. I want to see it. Uh, I, I'm I say nine, I want to watch seven. it too, but look, if, if you're better off, just go like buy some, buy your Saturday by going shopping. Friday. Yeah, like, if you got to do Friday. like, can you drive us to the mall? Just, you know. It's not necessarily the biggest game. All right. Ross got another one? Uh, yeah, I, I got one. Uh, you know, L- Texas A&M plays at LSU, and I think most of the focus on this game isn't necessarily the result, uh, right? I don't know that a lot of people think A&M will, will keep up with, with LSU. They did upset the Tigers last year, but it's the focus, I think, is on the Heisman Trophy, you know, and Jaden Daniels uh, of LSU. Um, I think – if you polled folks right now, he may be the favorite to, to win it all. Um, obviously, his numbers are ridiculous, uh, right? Uh, 46 total touchdowns, 10 on the ground, 36 in the air. He's averaging 330 passing, and then he's averaging 125 rushing. Um, he's shattered a bunch of single game type of uh, records and season records. It's It's been incredible to watch, uh, and he needs another big one. Uh, because he doesn't play unlike the other CFP or Heisman contenders like a Bo Nix, Michael Penix, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. They'll all be playing next weekend in championship Saturday, and he will not. So he needs a big performance, one last big hurrah. Can he get it? Make two quick shout-outs. One would be to West Virginia to see if they can get to 8-4 and four hmm. against Baylor. I don't really not going to watch the game, uh, but <laughs> no. I hope they get, I mean, there's probably got to be something better on Saturday at seven on FS1. Eh, maybe I will. No, there's um, a ton of good games on Saturday night. Yeah, I, you know, but I am interested to see if Neil Brown can get the Mountaineers to eight and four. It's a really nice season for them. Uh, also, one of my favorite names of a rivalry game, Iowa State, Kansas State are playing Farmageddon, they call it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Also, they will meet up in the meat judging contest later in the year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, drink, I still want to know about the uh, the Iron Bowl. Ah, uh, I can't believe we went we went this far into this. I know. And didn't have the Orange Bowl. Wow. Well, I blame Hugh Freeze and the Tigers for getting there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, their uh, war eagle kick. I'm going to be there, New Mexico State. Are you? Are you? Okay. Good Going job. out of the Iron Bowl, there's uh, splitting Dan and I up. Dan's taking the game. I'm taking the Iron Bowl. Uh, there you go. Uh, blanket yeah, coverage so. over Yahoo Sports, sports.yahoo.com. Come on, Bob. Mm-hmm. It's free. <laughs> it's free. Auburn ends up six and six. Uh, look, Alabama's uh 14 and a half point favorite, but funny things happen in Jordan Hare. Uh, you lose your final two and end up six and six. That's a t- that, that's just like if if Alabama can put some curb stomp on this, it really is a tough season all of a sudden for Hugh Freeze that had. I thought it rallied pretty well with that club and started to do a few things. And I think Nick Saban knows that, and he's got a lot to play for. So uh, Auburn, uh, 
Auburn needs to be really ready for this game. But funny things happen at, on the Plains, and uh, we shall see. But that is always a good game. Always 10-year anniversary of the kick six. As well. Yeah, the kick mm. six 10 years ago. I was driving home. That was another. I generally cover Michigan, Ohio State every year, whether it's in Columbus or Ann Arbor. I think it was in Ann Arbor. Yeah, it would be even years, right? And I was driving home and listening to that game on the radio, Alabama-Auburn. And the kick six happened. And like the broadcast couldn't really even, ex I couldn't figure out what happened. <laughs> Cause you're not like, they are like a field goal. And the next thing you know, Auburn, I was like, it was a block yeah. kick. And I remember being I was, in the car was, going, what is happening? Yeah. Uh, Auburn wins. And it's like, okay. I, I was in the press box yeah. and I committed press box protocol violation by standing up and spreading my arms and screaming. He's going to score. Cause I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Incredible. Incredible. All right. Any others? Lightning round. Pour one out for the uh for the history, the the memory of the games I used to watch on Thanksgiving. Uh Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Pitt, Penn State. Two that don't happen anymore and certainly don't happen on Thanksgiving weekend. But those two were mm. formative games in my childhood. It was like those two, Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, USC when they played in LA. Those are the four yeah. games I just had to watch every Thanksgiving. Yeah. I did pour one out for the black old Black Friday game between LSU and Arkansas. You guys remember mm. those crazy games? Nick Saban, oh, yeah. Houston Nut, and yeah, it's yeah. always something going on there. Covered one of them in Little Rock where Darren McFadden went wild. Mm. Pour one out won. for New England United matchup: UConn two and nine, UMass three and eight. <laughs> <laughs> Five combined wins, not that bad in that series. Uh, games. Uh, Games in Amherst, UConn, two and a half point road favorite. All right. Okay. Wow. ESPN Plus. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that should be one Fox year they're going to combine. Plus. One, you watch one year they're going to combine. <laughs> New England United will occur. It will occur. They might throw BC in there too. <laughs> a little uppity on them right now, but if they get them all together, it's going to be something. Uh, they need all the, all the com combining they can get. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Uh, all right, let's go to break. Uh, we'll be back with our race for the case picks. All right, let's pick la uh, sec two weeks to go. I how am I 39, 39 and three? I don't believe my I don't believe my I did not go uh, like 0 and six last week. Uh, the, the, the accounting has been suspect. <laughs> I'm have to let's check. Right now, Says uh, the, yeah, loser. The, the accountant yeah. is up. Two games on everybody. 43 Damn. 29. I was leading. Ross, what happened? 41 31. I am 39 39. Pat 34 38. And we have three ties, everybody. Anyway, I don't know about this. I'm going to check this. I'm, I'm checking. I'm seven games over 500 in my SI picks, and somehow I'm four under here. Hmm. Yeah, put hmm. a little effort into the pod, would you? <laughs> Number 13, <laughs> Ole Miss at Mississippi State. Egg Bowl, baby. Rebels giving 10 and a half Thursday, 7 30 ESPN. Oh, yeah. Perfect Thanksgiving night treat. Pat? It's funny. Uh, like Thanksgiving night, we have uh, plenty of football fans in the family, but they all generally usually want to watch the NFL game. And I'm battling to try Ooh. to get the Egg Bowl on. Yeah, just because, you know, the Egg Bowl is going to, there's going to be mayhem. I'll do my best to get that game on the TV, one of the TVs at least. Uh, I'm going to take Ole Miss to to cover i just uh, mississippi state with the coaching change I, I just don't know what to expect from them i know they they had a little bit of a rally last week but this is a different deal and i think i think mississippi's really good i mean they've at least offensively their defense is not good but they've got weapons i'm gonna say ole miss wins and covers a pretty big number for an egg bowl it is a big number for an egg bowl in uh, just with 10 do we say 10 and a half is that what yes. we're going with yep. um so the last four games of the series have all been within, you know, 10 points or have been decided by 10 points or fewer. And if you just historically going back, this, this game usually is pretty tight, you know, maybe once out of every three years, you might have a, uh, a result of more than one score. And I think we're probably going to get it here. Uh, I think Pat, Pat's right about the Mississippi state coaching change. Not sure what to expect. And yeah, I mean, it, Ole Miss has proven, I think this year that, they are a much better team, and uh, I think Ole Miss does, in the end, cover this this uh, ten and a half. You know what? Greg Knox fired me up last week, rolling through that locker room on the four on the four wheeler. <laughs> I think he carries it into the Thanksgiving week. I'm going with Mississippi State to cover. 
expect uh, expect that pick, uh, but I'm taking Ole Miss. I'll happy. I got. I need all the fades on Sean. I get. I'll take it with the Rebels. There you go. Uh, so I'll take Ole Miss. Number eleven, Oregon State at number six, Oregon. These rankings are pre-ranking. Whatever doesn't matter. Uh, Oregon's given thirteen and a half. Civil War, baby. Friday, eight thirty on Fox. Ross. Oh man, Oregon has played uh, playing just as well and as dominant um, as anyone in uh, in college football right now. And I think they'll be hyped up for this one, uh, seeing that they still have a chance to to go to a national championship. Uh, and I think they, they cover. I think it's another rivalry game blowout here. Give me the Ducks. Um, copy and paste what Ross said there for me. I just I- – you know, I mean, Oregon State's going to bring it to the best of their ability. Both teams can run, but Oregon can pass better than Oregon State can. DJ can't quite match throws with Bo Nix, so I'm going to take Oregon to win and cover and put a pretty good number of points on the board. I want to believe that Oregon is not going to overlook Oregon State towards the Pac-12 championship game, but I think Oregon State keeps it a little closer than 13 and a half. That's a big number for me. So I will take the Beavers to cover this game. Again, I'll fade, I'll fade Sean on that. Ducks, a lot of offense there. Number two, Ohio State at number three, Michigan. The game, we talked a great deal about this at earlier shows this week. Michigan is giving three and a half. It's noon. It's Saturday. It's Fox. It's in Ann Arbor. It'll be gray skies. Pat. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm going to say this. I think Michigan has been the better team all year. They have wobbled a little bit here lately, but I think their ability to stack up the running game, if you can contain Travion Henderson, put it on Kyle McCord. I don't like the calculus of Kyle McCord having to put it in the air like 30 times against the Michigan secondary. Marvin Harrison's great, but if you tackle him after the catch, if you can cover him in the red zone, uh, I think I think Michigan's better. I think I think this is going to be low scoring. I think it's going to be relatively close. I, if if Michigan's favored by three and a half, I say they win by four, 21 to 17. I would have uh, bef- like two weeks ago, I think I would have definitely picked Michigan to to cover a, a three, three and a half. However, I think Ohio State has played better lately. And uh, and uh, I think that this one will be tight the whole way. And if Michigan does win, it'll be within, you know, inside of four points. So Buckeyes to cover and maybe win. I think the most exciting matchup in this game is Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Will Johnson. It's going to be stellar. And that is the most difficult corner that he's going to have to face. I could see him going like seven for 80 and a touchdown. But that's a low number for Ohio State, uh, especially with their number one wide receiver. So I will go with uh, Michigan to cover and lock down their most dynamic offensive target uh, and the Wolverines cover. I started to really uh, uh, like this Ohio State team. Travion Henderson is the game changer. They could run in the interior with them, stay on schedule, stop the pass rush. Got to stop the pass rush of Michigan. Can't have third and longs and stuff like that uh, or behind the chains. And then he's a home run hitter. Very tight game. If you're going to give me three and a half, I'm going to take Ohio State. I think they can win the game. And then I I certainly think they can cover. So I'm going to take the Buckeyes uh, in this with that three and a half. And I get to fade Sean for a third straight one. This is it. This is the week it all changes. (laughs) I I got your plays, Sean. (laughs) <laughs> of course, I just pick after. Mm-hmm. Brett Elam texted me your picks. Uh, it's, I'm starting to see how this works. The two guys that pick near the end here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, hey, I was decisions. picking Ohio State, at, Ohio State. I'm taking them. Okay. Right. I'd consider the win there. I like them. Go ahead. Washington State at number five, Washington. Apple Cup. Huskies given 16 and a half Saturday, 4 p.m. on Fox. Obviously, games in Seattle. Uh, Ross. Uh, thankfully, this series is going to continue. They just yeah, announced. Nice. Uh, yeah, they just announced. Yeah, I think yesterday that the Apple Cup 
is extended uh, five, I mean, fly, five years because there was a chance with the realignment and there's still a chance with the Civil War, Oregon, Oregon State to take a year off or more. So thankfully, that will not happen, at least in the Apple Cup. Uh, great rivalry. Um, I think it's is Friday night. Is it Friday night? Yeah. No, Saturday. No, no. Saturday. Is it Four. Civil, Civil War's Civil Friday, Wars night. Friday night? Friday night. Apple Cup okay. Saturday afternoon. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, no, 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 just, one's nice. One's an Apple Cup. One's a Civil <laughs> yeah. War. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What? Uh, look, I'm not paying attention at all. What's the spread? Six, uh, 16? 16 and a half. 16 and a half. Woo! That seems like a lot. Way too much. Way too many. Give me Washington State. To the podcast you're yeah, on. I know, right? Completely <laughs> not paying attention. Um, give me the uh, yeah. Give me the Cougars to cover. I mean, they haven't played top notch the last few weeks. At one point, I think they lost six straight, maybe. Um, but they've uh, they won last week against Colorado, and uh, so I think they'll keep it with certainly within a couple of touchdowns. I'm going to take the Huskies to roll big here. I think they can win by 17, 20, 21, whatever. Uh, I just think they're locked in. They are eyes on the prize. It's right there in front of them. Finish the season 12-0 and for the first time since 1991. Go to the championship game. Take your chances there against Oregon in a rematch, most likely. Michael Penix's last game in Husky Stadium. He's not going out without chucking it around. So I, I think... Washington just should be fully locked in as the better team at home and takes care of business in a big way. I'm going to have to make Dan take Washington State here. I, I have <laughs> I'm left with no other choice. I was going to take them anyway. I, I was going to take them anyway. I'm sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the Huskies to cover Ready. this game. Excited for it. I'm taking Washington State. I'm taking Washington State. They're going to they're gonna bow up enough defense, 16 and a half. I'll take that. I start with that. Washington State. Number four, FSU at Florida. Florida State giving six and a half. Uh, no Jordan Travis. Saturday, 7 p.m. ESPN. Uh, back to you, Pat. Yeah, tough pick without Jordan Travis. Mm-hmm. But I have seen Tate Rodemacher play in an emergency situation with the game on the line last year, and he did well. Led Florida State to a win at Louisville. Too much on the line for Florida State to to blow this. They are going to win. They'll barely cover. This is a touchdown game. The spread six and a half. That's fine. I will take it. FSU gets out of the swamp at twelve and zero. Night game swamp. Florida kept up with a good Mizzou Missouri team last week. Probably, you know, had the game won with a minute left. Um, Florida State no starting quarterback. I think this shapes up to be an incredibly tight, ugly game that Florida has a good chance to win late, even without its starting quarterback. Give me the Gators to cover the six and a half. It's so dejecting as a locker room when your starting quarterback goes down, even more so when you have playoff hopes. It's almost a feeling you can't explain that well uh, because he's the leader of the team. I still think Florida State has enough talent around them to win by a touchdown against Florida, so I will go with the Seminoles to cover. I agree. I'm taking the Seminoles. Uh, I think they got enough to do this, and I think they're going to be very focused on this game. Uh, we have a bonus line. Only three Uh-oh. of us can participate because one could could uh, hmm? clearly just point shave, I guess, if you'd call it that. <laughs> Sean Wednesday night drinks. Oh, on oh. Wednesday night drinks, uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, 7 p.m. at various bars and taverns in the uh, DMV <laughs> over under set by Sean 14 and a half. Woo! <laughs> wow. Drunkest Woo! night of the year. Mm. Wednesday yeah. night before Thanksgiving. Mm. Drunkest night of yeah. the over year. under anyone. Go ahead. It's, it's a great night to be a young man. Um, yeah. You know what? Look, Sean's been a gamer all year. Sean showed me. We moved the time around. Sean's like, yeah, that's fine. I got it. No problem. Yeah, I'll be there. He's always on time. So my faith in Sean is rock solid, and he will hit the over on that. I have total confidence in him. Hashtag grit. (laughs) 14 and a half, huh? What time (laughs) do you start drinking? 7 p.m. 
Hmm. Stop seven. You thir- drink stops till Thursday at seven a.m. Yeah, right. <laughs> you drink seven till hours one or the two. Last call. Yeah, seven hours. Yeah, you two drinks per. You're you're averaging two drinks per hour. That's not too bad. Of course, it depends on what kind of drinks they are. Yeah, are Hopefully, you you're not just drinking bourbon. Uh, oh, then you'll no. be in real trouble. Start yeah. with beer. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go the over. I say he gets he gets fifteen. John, what are we drinking? I think it's going to be a healthy mix for sure. You know, we're, we're, <laughs> an unhealthy mix. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, yeah, better that. You know, a little run, a little pass, set up the play action. Mm-hmm. Just try to work the ball down the field when we when we need to. We need to adjust, I, get to a less crowded bar. We can do that. You know, hundred percent getting it done. Getting it done. Hundred percent getting this done. Go get yourself a Popeyes ch- turkey the next day. All right, Ooh, yeah. uh, good hangover lock food. of the week. Popeyes. Who you got? Uh, anyone got a lock of the week? I got one. Uh, right. Yeah, Ross. UTSA plays at Tulane. Ten and one Tulane. The Green Wave are three point favorite at home. Uh, they have been rolling. They will roll with a win into the American Championship game for a. Uh, a second year in a row. They've got to win this game, I I believe, to get there. I guess there's a a way they – no, I think they have to win this game. I think the winner of this game – The tiebreaker in that league has got me so confused. There's three undefeated teams. Yeah, Yeah, SMU. Yeah, I don't don't understand it. But anyway. Probably SMU seems to have a more probable chance to get in, even if they lose. But Yeah, yeah. uh, Well, Tulane's not losing. I think they win, and I think they win – Convincingly, at least, at least cover the three for sure. So, give me the Green Wave as my lock of the week in its coach, Willie Fritz, as my lock to probably get another job this offseason. Uh, speak, speaking of other jobs in that game, Jeff Trailer reportedly did mm. a Zoom interview mm-hmm. with uh, Texas A and M that went ninety minutes, mm-hmm. and then, oh, coaches, I I love you guys so much. He was asked about it after their game Saturday night. And his answer was like the most offensive thing you could possibly say is like any words I say about that or any words that are spoken about, about Jeff trailer and not about Frank Harris, their quarterback is a travesty to these 18 seniors. You know what? If you're that concerned about being asked legitimate news questions, don't do the zoom interview. Maybe that's the answer there as opposed to, blaming a reporter who's asking you a legitimate question and trying to deflect it as you're taking away the attention from these seniors. Where was your attention when you're interviewing for 90 minutes? Anyway, uh, my lock my lock of the week is Nebraska. Let me no, one thing on that. No. My favorite all-time coach denial. All-time favorite. And I know this is in college football. Jeff Blaschel is a hockey coach. He coached the... Grand Rapids, Griffins, uh, uh, whatever, like the AHL, AAA kind of team for the Detroit Red Wings. And he got asked, and the Red Wings had their job open, and obviously he was, he, they were killing it, and they, they had a chance to get the Red Wing job, and he, ref- he got angry and refused to comment on whether he'd be interested in taking the Red Wing job. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, my focus is on this team. He was all fired up about it. Of course, he took the job and was their coach for like seven. Who the hell would blame the AAA coach (laughs) from wanting to move up in the same organization? (laughs) It's insane. It's insane. It's like asking the offensive coordinator as the interim coach. Would you like that job full time? Hell yeah. 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 I would like that job. Anyway, go ahead. All time. That's great. Yeah, please. Yeah. They protest too much. Okay. My lock of the week. Uh, Give me the 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 corn rivalry, Iowa Nebraska. For some reason, Nebraska is favored in this by like two and a half or mm. whatever. I, um, have you seen <laughs> Iowa this year? They're atrocious, but they win. Yep, they're nine and two. Nebraska's five and six and has lost three straight games. Uh, I mean, Iowa nine, Nebraska seven. You're getting two. You win by two. Game over. And just again, don't watch the game. I'm going mean, to – let's end it off on a, on a late game here for my lock. I like UCLA giving 9.5 to Cal. I want to close out the, the regular season of college football strong with a, with a nice 10.30 p.m. Eastern time start. So I, I think Chip, Chip Kelly is still fighting, trying to build some momentum for next year. Uh, so I'll take the Bruins to cover that. 
like that one too. I'm going to go a late one too. I very interested in Toledo giving 10 and a half at central Michigan. I like, I like Toledo in that game, but I'm not going to take that. Um, I'm going to take Fresno state giving five and a half at San Diego state. Uh, Brady Hoke has already announced his retirement for the Aztecs. Fresno state's a much better team. San Diego state's three and eight, unless they're going to rise up for, for Brady. Mm -mm. Uh, if they are, they should have done that sooner. Mm -hmm. Uh, San Diego state's lost four in a row. Uh, the only team really they beat lately is, is Hawaii. Um, so I am going to, I know Fresno's reeling, but I think they got enough to win by five and a half. And, uh, I'm going to take Fresno state to, uh, injury. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to take Fresno state. That's my lock of the week. So there you go. Hopefully it's enough to win. That's a Saturday night late one. I already regretting that one. <laughs> <laughs> the words that barely escaped your mouth and you're already regretting it. I know how it goes. It. I understand. I'm already regretting it. I'm already. Uh, yeah, yeah, you took my UCLA pick. Uh, that was anyway, Sean took that. Yeah. I know. Sean oh, did. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. but he's the one I'm I'm not chasing you, Pat. You're in last. True. I <laughs> yeah. Also, like, what was this Arkansas one? There was a weird spread on Arkansas. Arkansas uh, and Missouri. So, it's only like six or something. So yeah. Like, uh, I have a small one on that. Can't find it. Sam Pittman's coming back. You never know. Pittman's back. Missouri mm. only getting, only giving seven and a half at Arkansas. Mm. What a puzzle. I anyway. wouldn't touch it. Mm. I wouldn't touch it. No, me neither. Anyway, Pittman's back. So let's get some Ham's beer. Ham's beer. Get old, good old Ham's beer. It'll help the Hogs. SEC Media Day next year. All right. That's our show. Enjoy your Thanksgiving if you already had it. Hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy a great weekend of football. We'll be back Sunday to break down all of the mayhem. We appreciate you. Last week of the regular season, appreciate you guys tuning in all season long. Incredible listenership. Uh, continue to tell your friends and family about us at Thanksgiving. Share us on social media. We will talk to you later.